Hey, hey, OCNers, I'm Blue Devil. Today we're going to take a look at a mini PC that can actually game. But it's not quite what you're thinking. Part desktop and laptop parts. This small form factor design, dubbed the best mini PC for light gaming, the SF110A320 by ECS. Being as it's not the most powerful PC, I think it'll be great for web browsing, some light gaming, and maybe a good streaming PC. Meet the ECS SF110 A320, a one liter sized bare bones PC that lets you decide how powerful to make it. Armed with AMD's basic AM4 base platform is the A320 chipset. The SF110 is by no means a gamer's first choice. However, for a second computer that the family can conveniently play CSGO, Rocket League, or just about any other low impact game on the market, so as usual, let's run down the specs of the base unit and then get to the parts I use for today's build. So like I said, the A320 chipset is based on AMD's AM4 socket. However, support for only up to 35 watt AMD Ryzen 3 and 5 CPUs are supported. For RAM, only laptop so dim DDR4 up to 2666 and 32GB are supported. There are two storage options available with a single M.2 2280 NVMe slot, as well as a single SATA 6 2.5 inch drive bay. USB connectivity, surprisingly, is pretty strong with four USB 2.0 in the rear I.O. with two USB 3.1 Gen 1 and a single USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C in the front I.O., along with headphone and microphone jacks. For video connections is a single HDMI, VGA, and a display port. Interestingly enough, there is another labeled display port slot, but no slot for connection. Networking needs are addressed by the included Intel 3165M.2 card that includes 802.11ac and Bluetooth 4.2. Also present, but not labeled anywhere in the spec chart, is a single RG45 Ethernet port, which I can confirm is running at gigabit speeds on the Realtek controller. Now let's get to the good stuff. Starting off with the CPU, I actually had a bit of difficulty deciding on which 35 watt CPU to go with. Having found AMD's 2400G or 3400G, I set my sights on finding one of them. Having four cores and eight threads meant it was more than capable. Plus also having Radeon Vega 11 graphics on board, things looked good. But with the only available options coming from eBay in China right now, I held off to a recent human malware situation. I originally bought an Athlon 3000G and while it worked, there was more to be had in terms of the graphics department. Finally settling on the Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G I got from eBay from a seller in Texas, I also picked up a Ryzen 9 3900X for a ridiculous price for my new workstation build. So keep your eyes peeled for that build. It's being sponsored by Aorus and EKWB. It's also being housed in the new Fractal Define 7. So the Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G having four cores, eight threads, and Radeon Vega 11 GPU. I set my attention on acquiring a kit of SoDim DDR4 memory. This area was another part of the build I didn't want to overspend on. Going back and forth on a 2x4 gigabyte kit or a 2x8 gigabyte kit of SoDim DDR4, I came across Team Group's Elite 2x8 gigabyte kit at 2666 for about 60 bucks on Amazon. Having a total of 16 gigabytes of memory for this tiny build is probably a good thing as the onboard Radeon Vega 11 GPU will steal system memory for graphics use. For storage, I'm going to be using what I had, populating the M.2 NVMe slot with a 512 gigabyte Samsung 950 Pro SSD, and the SATA 6 slot will be occupied by a Team Group T4's Vulkan 500 gigabyte SSD. So upon opening up the SF110, it is actually pretty easy thanks to the single thumb screw on the back of the case, right above the rear I.O. Once inside is the AM4 socket, two SODIMM DDR4 slots, and a single 2.5 inch drive bay are exposed. The available NVMe M.2 slot is tucked away under the 2.5 inch drive bay in case you wondered where it was. Also included in the box is a blower laptop style cooler for the AM4 CPU. Slapping in the Ryzen 5 Pro 2400G, applying thermal paste, then securing the cooler down with the four numbered standoff screw points. Note the cooler's fan also does come off for easy cleaning. Next up was the Vulkan 2.5 inch SSD, which took all of 30 seconds to install, since all I needed to do was slide the SSD face down, plug in the SATA power combo plug, and then mount the four screw points down. Now, I forgot to install the SODIMM RAM before the CPU cooler, but like I said earlier, just move the CPU fan out of the way and install the SODIMM RAM sticks like in any laptop. Once the CPU fan is reinstalled, all that was left was to put the top cover on and screw in the capacitive thumbscrew. 
So with the benchmarks, I tested Ida64's memory benchmark, Crystal Dismark for SSDs, Cinebench R15 for the CPU, as well as Firestrike and TimeSpy for the overall system benchmarks. Also something to note is I bumped up the DDR4 2666 RAM up to 3000 megahertz with AMD's Ryzen Master software. It's pretty well known that Ryzen CPUs, especially APUs, run better at higher memory frequencies. I didn't OC the CPU since it's already a lock CPU and already is in a small form factor design, as heat was my main concern. However, I was pretty surprised once I applied some Noctua NTH1 thermal paste on and instead of the stock junk, idle temps now sat in the mid to high 30s with low temps re only reaching 77C. That's pretty impressive, especially since I didn't even hear the blower style fan spool up at all that loud. Okay, as far as gaming performance goes, 1080p 60fps is what I was shooting for and the SF110 didn't disappoint. Running CSGO, Fortnite, and Overwatch, the SF110 hit around that 60fps mark, albeit all game settings were set to low, but it's fully capable to game on. So what do I think about the SF110 from ECS? Well, to be frank, I was blown away at Computex 2019 when I first saw it, dubbed the best mini PC for light gaming, as I saw it running the Division 2. Honestly, I thought it could be a great option for streamers, as it's super small and really capable. Well, with the right hardware installed, absolutely. Having an NVMe M.2 slot, 2.5 inch drive bay, dual channel memory on AMD's A320 socket really does sound awesome. The one thing I don't like is support for only 35 watt CPUs, which severely limits which CPU you can install in the SF110. My search led me to the conclusion that only CPUs to use for gaming on the SF110 would be any of the quad core or eight threaded GE AM4 CPUs with at least Vega 8 graphics. There is, however, from reading PC Mag's review of the SF110, another version that supports 65 watt AM4 CPUs. So I suggest looking at that model for better compatibility of consumer CPUs. All right, guys, if you wanna check out the ECS SF110 A320, links will be below. Please also take the time to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks a lot, guys. Blue Devil, out.